Yeah, and that's why they're doing it, Tom, because it's popular. Um, often, you know, popular is not always right, but it works in politics. Um, I mean, the question was, you know, do you support basically? Do you do, you, do you support the right of premiers to cut uh, shut borders? So it's sort of no surprise that that's um, as strong as it is. I think if you couch the question different, you may get a lesser level of support, still a majority support. Mm. If you sort of presented people with all the, you know, the various inconveniences and uh, others that come with it, and, and in instances where there's what's clearly unwarranted, um, where you know, there's no threat uh, posed by one state opening its borders to another th state, which poses no threat, but you know that's it's a good indicator that news poll finding of sort of what the federal government's been up against in terms of trying to you know you know soften the blunt instrument if you like and bring a bit more nuance into this thing and, and consistency in, in exemptions so pe everyone's operating by the same set of rules and we're not shutting people out just because they happen to live in a state even though they pose no risk so um you know you can't argue with the premier you, you always lose in politics I, I guess that and we're still waiting for this at what point does the tide begin mm. to turn I've noticed, you know, we're getting more reports in particular of stressed businesses in Queensland. That's just had, you know, the last mm. two or three months is usually very good for a lot of those tourism operators up north. That eventually spreads. I mean, if you get this going through uh, all of society, the job losses come, you know, and all the various dis different businesses connected are, are feeling the pinch as well. Mm. It's going to tell at some point. Yes, Tom, that's right. There will, there, there, of course, there'll be a reckoning with this. Um, look, we saw it just in the last hour or so. Daniel Andrews has announced on Sunday this week he'll start outlining a roadmap um, to, you know, for, for Victoria to sort of ease the restrictions. And there's been a lot of pressure, not just from Josh Frydenberg, but from business in that state, um, that they just can't live like this forever. And you need, you know, no one's, no one's demanding the Premier sort of, you know, open up next week and put everyone back at risk. But just to give a few put a few beacons out there, a few aiming points, just a bit of hope and yeah. something to look forward to, a bit of optimism and, you know, tell us that you know you we're going to get out of this and when we can reopen. So I thought that was pretty significant. But you're right. I mean, what, what works for the states at the moment, especially, say, West Australia, which, you know, shuts shuts themselves off to the world, the Queenslanders and so, you know, shutting off New South Wales and the ACT, is there is an economic cost to that, but the federal government is picking up the economic cost. So, so the downside politically is... is as well as economically is for the feds. And I, and I reckon that explains a little bit of the 50-50 Tea Party result too in news poll today, where people want want it fixed and they tend to be blaming the federal government for not being able to fix the problem, uh, even though their, their powers, you know, are quite limited thanks to the way the Federation's structured. So it's all got sort of rather complicated and messy. And that in turn explains why they've toughened up their language in Canberra in the last week or so over borders. They need to be seen to be muscling up You're and affecting in... some, sort of, yeah. uh, some sort of shift. You've written an interesting piece on the government and I suppose more specifically uh, Scott Morrison's approach mm. on China described as strategic patience and consistency. This is also Scott Morrison mm. in a you know diplomatic way trying to say, hey, we're not changing, indicating that it's mm. China's approach that has changed. I mean, some people would suggest we China hasn't changed in terms of, you know, we know what sort of regime it's been, but it has been an increased... Sure attempt by China to, you know, exert dominance over the world and the region as well. Hmm. Yeah, look, the Prem did an interview with us at the Financial Review, Tom, for our China series we were running this week, and he was quite forward-leaning, I guess, in his language. He, you know, essentially these trade threats, you know, the barley, the beef, now the threat to our wine exports, um, essentially he said, without explicitly admitting they were attempts to coerce us, you know, to change our policy on foreign interference and uh, foreign investment and things like that, but he essentially said that we're not trading those. You know, we're, um, we're not our sovereignty and our security is not for sale, and we'll treat each of these disputes as if they're legitimate, um, regardless of whether we think they're legitimate or not. He used the term "we'll play the ball," and they're not tradable. You know, those, those basically values aren't tradable. So it was quite firm that position. Um, now he and Malcolm Turnbull before him are sort of are having to deal with this a lot more than their predecessors. These attempts of coercion by China and and yeah, when he's when I asked him what has changed over the last three years, he said, "Well, nothing we've done." So it's, you know, I'll leave you to I'll leave you to you know fill in the fill in the gaps as yeah. to who and what has changed. And it is it's not just Australia. I mean, every country is getting this now from China. This they sort of get you over a barrel economically, then they start pulling it in, you know, pulling in the favour as such. So, um, and that's the position he's in now to try and sort of work out how to ride that out and, and deal with it. He did have a very interesting line further in the piece uh, where. He, these atmospherics, as the Prime Minister describes them, the atmospherics, he says he notes 
none of it so far has come from the mouths of Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping or Premier, Premier Li Keqiang. Um, so he's leaving a bit of a gap there, if you like, if they ever were to climb down from this at an official level, they could blame their... their blame their, you know, their subordinates, if you like. So it's, there's a lot of, I'm not plugging our paper, I think there is a lot of interesting nuance in that interview uh, from the PM.